Abby? Abby Chandler? Is that really you? The woman who'd stopped in front of me, mouth open, eyes bulging, shouting my name, had recognized me. Darn it. My escape into anonymity wasn't off to such a hot start. I can't believe it's you! And I couldn't believe I'd been recognized so quickly. My first hour back in Hideaway Grove, by, of all people, Brooke something or other, whom I couldn't really place but who left me with the feeling that I'd never liked her. We were standing on Main Street on a warm spring morning amid storefronts painted, inviting creamy pastels and festooned with flowering plants. Young moms watched their kids play in the village green, and older folks ambled toward early bird lunch specials. A handful of tourists strolled along the sidewalk, taking in the specialty shops, antique stores, and art galleries the town was known for. You're back, Brooke exclaimed. Brooke was a year or so older than me. I'm 24, with a carefully styled blonde ponytail, full-on makeup, dressed in yoga togs. I was a little taller, with dark hair, that I hadn't combed since maybe sometime late yesterday. The remains of the makeup my tears hadn't washed off, and I wore jeans and a t-shirt I'd pulled out of my dirty laundry hamper shortly before sunrise. So? Brooke's gaze flicked from my head to my toes, and she stretched her smile wider until it froze in place. What are you doing here? I was hiding out. Not because I was the star witness in a high-profile government investigation, protected by federal marshals. I wasn't on the run from a drug cartel. I hadn't embezzled millions from my employer or murdered someone. I was hiding out from, well, everything. So I certainly couldn't talk about it, especially to Brooke, whose last name I'd probably remember eventually, along with the reason I'd never liked her. I'm visiting my aunt, I said. Oh, yes, of course, your Aunt Sarah, Sarah Sweets. Brooke nodded down the street to the bakery my aunt owned. Sarah's sweets turned out delicious cookies, cakes, cupcakes, and other goodies, all beautifully decorated. Her business had been a mainstay in Hideaway Grove for decades. You used to live with her during the summers, Brooke said, when your parents were off seeing the world and didn't want you with them. Now I remembered why I didn't like Brooke. My parents were tenured university professors, whose idea of a fun summer was digging through ruins in a remote jungle, or investigating obscure museum archives and settlements accessible only by camel train. They didn't want me with them, any more than I wanted to be there. Well, good seeing you, I announced. It wasn't, of course, but this was an easy out for me. I walked away. We'll have to get together, Brooke called. I pretended I didn't hear her. I paused outside Sarah's suites. The building was painted buttery yellow. Beside the entrance were low flower beds bursting with color. The bell over the door chimed as I walked inside, and the delicious scents hit me, bringing on a wave of emotion I hadn't expected. Memories swamped me, causing tears to pop into my eyes. I blinked them away and saw my Aunt Sarah standing behind the glass display case, sliding a tray of fresh-baked brownies into place alongside rows of sugar cookies.